All right, we're going to try and make this work. We're going to try and make this happen. What was that noise on your end? Can you oh, hear shoot. him or no? I can hear someone. Oops. I uh, <laughs> I completely... I got the streaming stuff set up, and then I completely... Oh, shoot. No, I have the... Oh, no. Uh, uh, oh, no, I did this all wrong. Panic. Change. Uh, uh, uh oh, this is not good. I'm going to... I'm going to do this. All right, so I think we're live. Uh, I completely uh, messed up the title and the stuff on YouTube, but that's okay. Welcome, Spartacus. How are you doing today? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. I will admit, I think this is going to be a little weird. Yes. But I like. Also, uh, because of how rushed this is, I did not properly explain this to the players. Can you go ahead and ready up, you noob? Ready it up. All right, so this show match is sponsored by Defibrillator and the Bayou Boys. So they uh, they threw me some money over on Patreon, and they're like, "Hey, we want you to show do a show match." And uh, one of the things we want to showcase is this game mode that we invented that we play amongst ourselves as friends, where you have an engineer, and if that engineer dies, you lose the game. And then Masterleaf took that idea and he made it into an actual, like, little custom game mode, which he put on this map, Tournament Shaft. And he took that and he made it, like, a legit game mode. So you start, an engineer spawns, and then if that engineer dies, you lose the game. The game is largely the same, except you can only build infantry, riflemen, rockets, and zone troopers. And I believe there's a lock of, like, four zone troopers. And then, of course, you can build refineries and harvesters from the refinery, but that's only one harvester per refinery. All right, let's go ahead and introduce our players. As the Cyan, in the top left-hand corner, this is Masterleaf. And the red down in the bottom right corner. I have no idea. I think it's space? Dirty Dutch? Dirty Dutch? I'm going with Dirty Dutch. Nope, it's space. So, it's this game mode only works with GDI. Like, if you load up in this map and you are a faction other than GDI, it you can just build everything. And so you basically have to, like, self-restrict. Which you can do that. Uh, but the proper way to play is only GDI. Maybe at some point the game mode will be expanded and we will add other factions. But for now, it's just GDI. And so as you can see, space going for the armory right out of the gate. You might as well. And it's going to be sort of a low econ start. One of the downsides to this game mode is that you don't have the war factory to produce additional harvesters. So your economy doesn't get going as quickly as it would in a normal game. But you are also only spending money on cheap units. So you have that going for you. Hmm, I'm seeing an early uh, command post out of base down in the bottom right too. Going to go for that AP ammo. Right, so we're seeing a differentiation between the two players. Masterleaf immediately going for the refineries. Oh, by the way, there are Tib Spikes and an EMP control center, but the only engineer that you get on the map, you will lose the game if you send into a <laughs> into a structure. So, 
that's the downside. That's another downside, is that uh, no tip spikes for you. But, yeah, we have double refinery coming out from Master Leaf, and then the armory and the command post coming out from space. So upgrades versus economy. Okay. I will admit, I, I am still trying to catch my breath with what this is. So we've got a, a bunker down for Master Leaf. That was a smart move. He's got his engineer in a bunker. Where is the engineer for space? It's just out in the open. No, space's engineer is just south of a power plant. Right, but I mean, it's not it's not protected by anything. So if a scout came down through this bottom part, part of the map, it would uh, potentially win the game. Huh. That, uh, that is a potential downside. We maybe can't hear you, which is weird, because I definitely see you spiking. Oh, okay. I think you need to turn your mic up a little bit. So I can hear you fine, but apparently it's transferring uh, not too well to the stream. Just after you say that, Spartacus, moments later, Space, of course, realizes his potential mistake and... Builds himself a voxel. Space packs up his MCV, heads out to somewhere, and what is he going to try and do? Is it just an expansion, or is it perhaps something more? I mean, I imagine it's an expansion. Both guys playing this very defensive, which is to be expected, and I guess we could maybe just end up in a stalemate where neither player even attacks, and it's just this for the rest of time. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, uh... I mean, I imagine, have either of these guys played this game mode before? I imagine Master Leaf must have some idea of what's going on. So Master Leaf made the custom map, but it was like months ago at this point. It was maybe three or four months ago that he made this actual map rule set. Oh, nice. So in the north, Master Leaf just drew fire with two of his rifleman squads from a squad that Space had in a building so that Master Leaf could garrison the building with full health squads. A lovely little moment there by Master Leaf to outplay. So this is a point where rocket squads would potentially come in useful to try and break the opponent's garrisonable structures, whereas just having riflemen, it's going to take you a long time to break down foxholes or garrisonable structures. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what the correct choice will be here. I guess it depends entirely on... Yeah, there's, there's no established meta for this. That's why it's interesting. So it's like, what is the proper move here? There are no proper moves. Now, Master Leaf was trying to sneak a little squad along the left side of the map down south, but it did get caught by space. Master Leaf trying to uh, make some moves with some different units on the right and the left side, but everything is coming up difficult purely because of those garrisonable structures. Master Leaf is now going to try and run directly through the Tiberium field, which he'll run into more garrisonable structures and have a little bit more trouble with that. Yeah, now I'm curious. Can you build watchtowers? I'm assuming no. not. Otherwise, these guys would be watchtower dropping all day long. Yes, yeah. No watchtowers. I believe no base defenses of any kind. Sonic emitters would also be quite devastating. And then, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you'd probably just MCV push. All right, Master right. Leaf with a big group of infantry in the central of the in the uh, center of the map. I almost said the south because it's the southern central Tiberium field, but he's just gonna bum rush and go for it. No rockets, all riflemen. Yeah, I don't think he's gonna make much uh, much happen here, and it seems like he's actually backing off. I think that's not a bad idea. Unfortunately, he's just kind of running all of these squads <laughs> through the Tiberium, so they're just all gonna end up dead for nothing. So we're at the point of the game where both players have, it looks like, four Harvesters on Space's side, four or five Harvesters on Master Leaf's side, where you start to get enough Harvesters that you can actually utilize them as part of your offensive force. Actually, Space is doing that right now. He's going for a Mass Crush. He's not quite going to get it. Master Leaf was paying a little bit too much attention. Oh, man. That Harvester is coming in hot. Yeah, has got a few crushes. Another one. Actually, this harvester doing serious damage. So, oh, man. It's really great to see these guys figuring this out. They had almost no idea going into this. Literally, Space thought this I was going to be a normal show match. And then he found out moments later that it was a game mode with custom rules. So Space is really coming into this cold, and he's kind of developing a little bit here. He's got himself a harvester that took a bunch of damage, but he bought, got a bunch of crushes. Now imagine... If, like Master Leaf is perhaps going to do, if Space had comboed that with infantry and a couple of rocket squads. 
Yeah, it seems like it, mixing in the harvesters would certainly help because, I mean, they're going to be a tanking force and it's going to force the infantry to move around. So that means if they're moving, they're not firing. Uh, yes. But then, then the bunkers will still help because there's no way to clear out those bunkers aside from the rocket squads. So that's the thing is you don't have to clear out all of the foxholes. Uh, someone in chat did suggest just making a essentially a foxhole army, and that would be uh, that would be difficult to break. I guess in that case you would end up getting holed up in your base, and then your you would get out ecoed by the other guy. But yeah. uh, in this case, no one is super foxhole just yet. And Masterleaf actually don't know if he can do this. I guess he can call for transport. He's got an airfield. And I think he's going to try, like, a mass call for transport. I'm not oh sure. I believe he disabled all support power, so I don't know that he can do anything with that uh, with that airfield. Like, he can't build orcas or hammerheads or anything. Well, we're going to see some kind of engagement here on the left-hand side. Looks like space going to be getting the worst side of this one as Masterleaf is kind of catching him in a bad spot. Yeah, he's got the garrisonable structures. The MCV deployed before any real shots off got got off onto the MCV. And yeah, Master Relief is going to be able to crush through Space's forces here. A couple of riflemen heading through the Tiberium, taking that extra damage before they finally get gunned down by Master Relief's forces. Okay, so there's a huge swarm of infantry on the far right-hand side that have been stacked up, and they're actually moving into Space's base. Oh, this is and, great. Uh, they have been spotted, though. Yeah, he's trying to use the the attack move to like get past the uh, or the force move to try and get past the uh, the hunker down, and everything is going to go down. Barely not making it. That was a great attempt from Masterleaf. He had some great ideas there, but he ultimately wasn't able to actually punch through. So if he had tried something like that a couple of minutes earlier, he would have actually uh, busted through space and just like won the game outright. But it was a little late. Orca strike coming in. Orca strikes, okay. The orca strike might be a nice bunker buster for uh, for the bunker that we established that the engineer is in, but I don't know, man. It's looking like it's just going to be swarm v swarm, and uh, really, it's just going to be a matter of who loses that that decisive battle in the middle somewhere. Space sending out some forces to the north. He's also starting to long-distance harvest from the center. No one has tried, uh, like, the... I don't know what you would call it, but sort of like a base push, but with barracks, where you just drive to the other side of the map and drop barracks near your opponent. So you've got your eco back home, but you can put direct pressure onto your opponent. No one has tried just yet that. I thought that's maybe what Masterleaf was going to do, but he's setting up eco in the middle of the map. Yeah, Mass Relief is going for a strategy of, like, stacking all of his units, similar to what you would do with, like, Fast Leg Descents, trying to get them to look like a smaller group of units or potentially be able to sneak in and into a spot. So, like, he's got a ton of units stacked on top of each other, but they just don't stack the same way. Yeah, uh, they, don't, the they don't stay stacked as well. Space taking some damage in the north actually cleans up a harvester of Master Relief. So Master Relief, whether by auto harvest or by intention, went for those units, and now he's going to pull a whole bunch of forces back to try and deal with that attack from space. Yep, and and he's definitely going to clean this up. That's the thing is like you just have to have such an overwhelming force in order for it to really make any difference, or you just really have to find that foxhole just by accident. But both of these guys have tucked those foxholes in just the right spot where I think it's going to be tough for either one of them to get to it. Maybe as the meta develops, foxholes will become banned, but uh, we'll see. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I don't know. I like the foxholes. I guess grenadiers would make this thing interesting. <laughs> yeah, grenadiers clearing out a foxhole instantly. Maybe uh, maybe in version 2, grenadiers get added back. Master Leaf trying to run in both on the right side and on the left. He gets caught both places and forced back. Yeah, we got Mass Foxhole down in the bottom left from Space, and it's going to be Foxhole v. Foxhole from Space and Mass Relief, but it looks like Space has a better unit composition down here. Hello, Baby Bert. He is also joining the Foxhole v. Foxhole war. Always good to have Baby Bert joining in. Ooh, Orca Strike coming in from Space to Bunker Bust Master Leaf, and it does indeed clean up one bunker, but Master Leaf's reinforcements, I think, are going to be able to break Space's units. I'm curious what the fight down in this bottom left corner is meant to do. It seems like maybe they're just trying to 
stack up unit veterancy? I think uh, Space was trying to do something and then he got caught by Master Leaf. I'm not 100% sure that that was a intentional strategy. Yeah, that's a good point. Man, there's just swarms of infantry everywhere. Now we're going into the middle of the map where the expansion from Master Leaf is spread out. I mean, just look at the expansion from Master Leaf. He's just all over the map with these harvesters. He's steadily increasing. He's also got a sneaky group of units over there on the right side of the map. We'll have to see if Space actually has enough forces to deal with that, considering how many he has put into the middle of the map with this Foxhole army. Master Leaf might not actually have enough defenses here on the front line. Yeah, Master Leaf keeps committing to these uh, these back edge of the map type deals, and now we're actually seeing zone troopers coming out from uh, from space. Do, have we seen a tech center out from Master Leaf yet? I didn't spot one. He may yeah, very well go for one now. He's had the command post for a long time. They both got all of their upgrades pretty much before they actually engaged each other, so there was no sort of timing attack where one player had an upgrade advantage. I've seen a lot of refineries back in Master Leaf's base that he could probably sell off, just get the extra cash. It looks like he is recycling some of his base right now. I'm gonna cycle out some of those uh, riflemen and or some of those buildings, turn them into riflemen. Actually, yeah, of attrition here. you might uh, so if you sell off the tech center you get uh, grenadiers or you get uh, zone troopers. I actually don't remember. Nice D garrison there from Master Leaf to save two of his squads from getting bombed out by the Orca Strike, but not a big deal. It would have been two Rifleman squad down the drain. Yeah. But if you sell off your tech center, you might actually be able to get around the unit cap on either zone troopers or you might get a grenadier. I don't remember what you get from a tech center. Oh, because there's a unit cap as well. Yeah, on zone troopers. All right, Master Leaf coming in with a bunch of harvesters. Not Are those, looking like what he wants. Uh, those might have been auto harvesting or something, because if so, that was a really bizarre strategy to... Yeah. Uh... Oh, Master Leaf's running through the Tiberium with his engineer right now. I'm not sure what his game plan here is. He's already lost a quarter of his HP on his engineer. He might just be giving up at this point. That's what it looks like to me. I think he's Either realizing that or... Harvesters. Yeah, that engineer's on the front line. There he goes. And that's it. So Space getting a somewhat out of the blue victory there. That was an interesting game. Um, it didn't seem like either one had like a clear strategy from the beginning, but then again, no, they kind of like thrown on them at the last minute, so it's not shocking. Yeah. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see what they think about a game number two. For now, Space gets it, and Space is up one zero in this potential best of five. But we'll see if they're uh, if they're up for playing more games or not. Let's see what Mr. Leaf has to say. It would work better on compiled version. Not sure what that means. I think he's saying if he compiled the map. I think he might be saying the lag we were seeing might be the map performance. Master Leaf is, confir is confirming that he suicided. Yeah, it seems like the Grenadiers might add, like, a uh, yeah, see, he's got the same thought. Again, limit the number of Grenadiers, because otherwise they could be OP. But it seems like mixing them in, and they'd be also, they'd be also tough to find in the swarm of units, so, like, you know, I don't know. That that would add like an interesting element of strategy. You kind of have to hide your grenadiers, and then if you can get some lucky throws in, right? So uh, if you could do like four or you know something grenadiers, some limited amount, then uh, you could potentially 
try and pull something off with them. What does Steel Talons do? Is that something different? Uh, heavy Harvesters. Uh, seems like Leaf wants to play some normal games. Does not seem to be feeling the kickball today. All right, I'm going to try and mix this up on the fly. We will switch them over to Nod, and then that will give them all of the regular units, which... Uh... So basically, we're going to try and experiment on the fly, which totally breaks the game mode, but we'll see how it works out. I assume it'll be like Shadow Team Rush, and neither side will have foxholes, so... Run for the bunkers. Yes. So I'm curious as to uh, as to how this will work. Obviously, play Nod. You know, Bike Buggy is very fast. Shadow teams can fly. But uh, we'll see how it works out. In the south side, as the Cyan Nod, this is Master Leaf. And on the north side, as the purple Nod, we have Space. So space not going anywhere with that engineer. Yeah, I'm curious as to... Uh, so Master Leaf went for the garrisonable structure, but of course you have Black Hand now, so like that's kind of a double-edged sword. If you've got bikes and buggies, then you can... Or even a Reckoner, I guess. Then you can keep your engineer further away from harm. But if you've got it in a building, you run the potential of the building getting bombed or getting flamed. So Space has put his engineer very in the corner, which took half its health to get there. And there are shadow teams yes. about to drop in here, and he has no idea. I'm and really surprised Space also didn't shadow team. He says, if you buggy, I'm dead. <laughs> Seems like he didn't know about the bunkers. I don't think he knows about the shadow teams either, obviously. Okay, what yeah, I think his plan was Reckoner. Oh, okay. I like the Reckoner idea. That's going to be tough to tough to deal with. Well, I mean, they have, like, all the same bike buggy nonsense or, you know, scorpion tanks or whatever. That's Master true. Relief, I think, is just going to go for it. The Engineer is going to jump inside the, Master, uh, inside the Reckoner. I thought Master Relief was going to try and jump on the Engineer before it got in the Reckoner, but now he's just got these shadow teams running around. And... Yeah, it's weird. He must have thought that he, was, that he had went for a garrisonable structure and he just couldn't what garrison it was. Right. Can Shadow <laughs> Teams bomb Reckoners when they when they deploy? I assume Ooh. no, right? They might be able to. I'm assuming he's about to try it. <laughs> if so, this uh, could be really interesting. Okay, I don't think they can. Is he going to, like, force fire bomb well, somehow? There's the exposed uh, Shadow Teams. He's going to bomb the War Factory. He gets the War Factory right out of the gate. Master Leaf goes for the sale as well. Oh, there was the GG. We probably should have said no base defenses. Wait, how did he die? He didn't. He uh, he only went for the Shadow Teams. Master Leaf didn't do anything behind that. I oh, thought he was, like, okay. building... Uh, I thought he was building, like, refineries or whatever behind that. But he wasn't. He was doing literally nothing. Hmm. As you do.
gentleman's agreement. No rush, 20 minutes. All right, so we're going to make them play Steel Talons. We can either call that first game a wash, depending on how this goes, or, uh, hey, ready up. Yep, or we yep. can, depending on how this goes, we can um, just say space wins. Because right now space is up 2-0. But Master Leaf suicided that first game. Which, to be fair, he was trying a couple of things somewhat incorrectly, and uh, I get why he suicided. Yeah. All I will right. admit it. Oh, sorry, go ahead. In the south side, as the orange steel talons, this is space. And on the north side, as the red steel talons, it's Master Leaf. Hey, Master Leaf <laughs> and space being gents today, letting us throw them into, I don't know, the wolves' den or something with this show match, which is very ridiculous and uh, very ill planned. Like, I didn't contact these guys beforehand and let them know that we were doing this. They were just up for it out of the blue. All right, right into the Heavy Harvester. That is what I was hoping to see. So now you've got one Heavy Harvester, which is essentially your VIP. And, you know, Harvesters are useful or are protected generally, but... <laughs> oh, no. Okay, good. He got it. Yeah, they can't hear us anyways. So. I was going to say, I'm pretty sure you can't type as an observer to players but that would be slightly game breaking i think <laughs> i'm not supposed to or what yes that is the exact thing you are not supposed to it's not that you can't gentleman's agreement my friend yeah so yeah, since I this was is early airfield was going to be the trick here and that's exactly what it's going to be for master leaf Ooh, okay so he sells his deal. mcv so, now he's got a second engineer. I actually don't know how the rules work on this game mode. Like, if the extra engineer counts, or if he sends this into a tip spike if he just loses the game. It would be kind of funny if he did, though. I think it's worth seeing. Where did Master Leaf's VIP engineer go? It is in the Harvester. Oh, he sent his into the Harvester as well. Okay. Yeah. So, it's going to be engineer. rocket yeah. squads to go for the Harvester. And then you just have to figure out which one it has the engineer inside of it. And that's the game. Ooh, the Titan is going to be interesting. Because so the it's... Titan could theoretically crush the Harvester. Right. Harvester hmm. crushing versus Harvester hunting. I'm, uh... So, these two guys... Someone asked in the chat who chooses the faction. In this case, I am, because... Uh, the actual minigame mode only works with GDI. So when Master League built the map, he only set it custom to be uh, to block units, extra units and stuff with GDI. And so the other factions are normal. And in this case, Master League is just going to try and gun down the heavy harvesters one by one. But he's actually targeting the wrong harvester, and he just doesn't know it. Yeah, can he not see the garrison? I don't I, think I guess... you can. Hmm. No, you must be able to see the garrison, right? But I guess it wouldn't matter. I, I guess doing some damage to a harvester is never a bad idea. I mean, it is in this case where killing one particular harvester gets you an insta win. Yeah, that's true, I guess. In this case, I mean, if you can, you should just suicide onto one harvester if you get the kill. Well, so we can put the issue of the multiple engineers to bed, because he does have a tip spike. Oh, good. Okay. So if you build extra engineers as a non-GDI faction, then you do indeed... Uh, then you don't indeed lose the game. Someone asked to explain the rules. So this is something called Napoleonic VIP game. You start the game with an engineer who is your VIP. If that engineer dies, you lose the game instantly. So... This engineer inside of this Master Leaf Harvester is the VIP. If he dies, Master Leaf loses the game. The normal version of the game mode, as described by uh, the Bayou Boys, is that 
You play as GDI, you can only build riflemen and rocket squads, and harvesters via a refinery. So those are your limits. Oh, and four uh, zone raiders. So those are the rules. We're mixing things up a little bit because game one was original rules, and it turned very much into a stalemate. And so we're mixing things up with Steel Talons, and we just played a game with Nod. This one's looking kind of over to me because uh, Master Leaf is all in on this this hammerhead rush, and it did not do what he was looking for it to do. And now we've got slingshots out, and already a tier three as well. So it's not looking too good for him. Yes, Master Leaf going for the MCV cell right out of the gate is uh, maybe not the best long-term strategy, but uh, he's. Trying to make it work now. Firehawks are just hunting down his hammerheads. He's got literally nothing. Uh, so yeah, Master Leaf going for the MCV sale was not necessarily the best plan. There's the fire sale. Master Leaf calls it quits. Wasn't a bad idea. I liked I liked the hammerhead rush, but the problem was with like the, those heavy harvesters are just so tanky, and you're never gonna kill it, especially without AP ammo. Um, especially when you don't target the right one. I don't know if you could actually... See. I guess that's the question, is like, can you actually see what units are garrisoned in there, aside from them shooting at you? You must be able to. Yep. So I think Space takes it. Uh, first one was a free win, but after that he got two legitimate wins. And uh, so... We'll get them set up. I think these guys are probably done. Master Leaf is actually streaming, so I think they're going to play some normal games. And we could very much just go into uh, some normal games with some space and Master Leaf. Are you up for that? I don't mind that idea. That doesn't sound terrible. Just to kind of round things out. I'd like to squeeze in maybe a game or two, just because we're, we're here now and things are working. I think Master Leap is probably going to want to call it a, uh, a space win. One of your commenters dropping me pretty hard. He says, uh, Cybert summoned my soul straight out of limbo a second time to dual cast some live games. And he says, my mic is muffled because I'm talking from the beyond. That's true. That's true. Dead man, dead men tell no tales, right? Dead men cast some games twice a year. <laughs> oh, uh, you don't have R16, do you? I do not have R16 now. So I guess I, I might have to duck out. Uh, do you want to install R16 so that we can cast some games? Well, I can duck out and I can give you the opportunity to cast these guys. Match silly versus space would be pr pretty good. Yeah, they, I mean these guys like they do they do good games. Yeah, it's gonna take me a minute to even figure out how to get R sixteen. All right, so if you want to take a break, see if you can get R sixteen, then we'll just go into uh, some regular space versus Master Leaf games. So uh, I'm still wanting to set up one more show match with Napoleonic VIP, and uh, we might do it. Just like gentlemen's agreement, or we might do it uh, for real. Interesting. All right. Well, I'm going to back out of this one. It would be pretty amazing if these guys decided to play Steel Talons versus Steel Talons. <laughs> Steel Talons is the new meta, man. Haven't you heard? Uh, they actually kind of were in uh, in 1.03. Who was it? It was Drive who was winning games with his heavy harvester rushes. Not like <laughs> rushing two heavy harvesters, but getting like five heavy harvesters and loading them with stuff, and then just mass crushing. When was this? 
uh, like, you know, a year ago or something. We might wow. actually get Steel Talons versus uh, Zocom, which would be pretty sick. Well, That's an unusual match. a lot of Zocom. Yeah, yeah, he's been, uh, he's been touting the Zocom strategies. So I'd like to go on the record because everybody says I sound muffled. Yes. Cybert was the one that messed with my audio settings, so he is the one to blame. I like that you're blaming my remote fiddling and not just you have a bad mic setup. I I believe the the first of the two options was correct. <laughs> so it's not that it's that I'm bad, not that you have a bad setup. Generally speaking, that is true, yes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the map is Winter Meltdown. This is, I think, not a map I have ever seen played competitively. I have maybe seen it once when I loaded up a skirmish or something like that. All right, in the bottom left-hand corner, as the Cyan Zocom, this is Master Leaf. And in the top right-hand side, as the red GDI, this is Space. Space and Master Leaf playing one of the best games of all of 2020 in Kane's Wrath. I believe it was a tournament crater game, and uh, there was just an absolutely phenomenal match. And now we're here on a very weird map that a little bit reminds me of Small Town USA, a little bit reminds me of Tournament Coastline, and I guess it's, you know, it's a custom-made community map. Made by who? I don't know. Someone dug it up. But it actually has ambient sound, which I always like to hear. And it's a snow map, which I always like to see snow. So, it's got a special place in my heart, considering I've played, like, one skirmish game on it. Actually, I feel like I lost a game where I went for a Corruptor Rush on a map very similar to this when Sparty and I were streaming a hundred years ago when Sparty still existed in the game of Kane's Wrath. Although they say on this map you can still hear the echo of his voice wafting through the air. The echo of his voice wafting through the air. Wow, you're going to me that way. I can <laughs> never resist the idea of just leaving that awkward silence, so I have to do it. Spartacus trying to get some R16 up and running so that he can join us for some casual games between Master Leaf and Space. In this case, uh, Master Leaf and Space, both opening pretty standard. It looks like this is a one Tiberium Spike kind of map. And then you've got kind of a very weird uh, path for your natural expansion in your third base. If you go as Master Leaf is, or as Space is going, if you go uh, sort of north, north to south, when you go for your third base, it's a very awkward transition onto an island. Or if you go for the center third base, it's contested, so you might meet your opponent there. So I'm definitely curious to see how these guys choose to play this out once we get past the natural expansions. And the drive time from main base to natural expansion is a little bit longer than a lot of the other community-made maps. It feels a little bit more tournament rifty, that kind of a drive time to get your expansion up and running. But both these guys playing quite standard right up to their five harvesters on their main field, transitioning into their naturals. And uh, a couple of pit bulls coming out from each fellow. I guess we have these little high ground buildings, which might actually become quite useful if you garrison them up. Like if, if Masterly, for example, is going for lots of Firehawk shenanigans. You know, you Stratofighter into the opponent's base, but then you're flying the long way home and garrisoning these central island, high ground island locations might be useful strategically to eliminate some of those Firehawks on the way home or, you know, Orcas or whatever. Pitbull from Space going to be pulling back. Space got the expansion. We're up and running on the south side, but a little bit of a long drive for his harvester. The refinery placement is a little bit better for Master Leaf at his natural expansion. Master Leaf going into a command post and an airfield after his expansion is up and running. Scouting units coming in from Master Leaf and uh, getting destroyed there. 
It's going to be Orcas for Master Leaf. I don't know what he has planned after this. Possibly another airfield as he's got something queued. It's going to be another refinery. No double airfield drive kind of tactics coming out from Master Leaf today. Yes, we are playing on the Xbox. The original Xbox is indeed what we're playing on today. Someone in chat asking about if this game is on Xbox. They did an Xbox 360 release of Kane's Wrath. And I know some people used to play it, like, you know, five or six years ago. I don't know if they still do play it. And I don't know what the uh, what the status of the online multiplayer is. If it's something like, you know, it's peer-to-peer -peer where you just need two people to be online at the same time. Or if there's some kind of official server routing and the servers have gone offline so you can't play online anymore. I don't know what the status of uh, Command & Conquer on the Xbox is. Pitbulls through the middle of the map for space. They're going to take some shots from APCs from Master Leaf. Master Leaf with a couple of Orcas heading out. It was Grenadier clearing the building. Very nicely done there. By, and a uh, little bit of a misfire there by Master Leaf trying to, I guess, predict where that harvester was going to be. Nice clearing of the foxholes by Master Leaf, utilizing that Grenadier to shut down Space's defenses. And oh my gosh, Master Leaf, he's going to try and garrison the foxhole, I think. He didn't quite manage to do it, but he almost did. Master Leaf with more APCs on the north side of the map. Going to be potentially looking to do a little bit of harassment up there. He's still got the Orcas sharking around Space's natural expansion. I love this inclusion of a couple of rocket squads here at this near building just to put direct pressure onto Space's base. Reminds me a little bit of those, uh, of if you could garrison a building on uh, Small Town USA and you could directly attack your opponent's buildings depending on how they place them on their main field. Zone Shatterers being mixed in as well. Not something you see very often, but Master League bring, bringing out the Zocom strategies for sure, and he's just directly hitting Space at this point. Space a little bit lacking on the defense. I'm not sure if he was trying for something else, but these APCs and these Pitbulls are a little bit late to the party. More rockets. Oh, actually, a couple of orcas going to be showing up for space. They get gunned down by the missile squads inside of that building. They get shut down, and space went for a pretty heavy commitment into this AA. I mean, he got tungsten shells. He got the AA batteries right on the front line, but he doesn't have a lot on the ground to deal with the zone shatterers. And Master Leaf is actually burned through most of space's defense. A mammoth tank going to be coming up now. Railguns a still a good distance away because space went for tungsten shells and not railguns right out of the gate. Lovely Orca Strike coming down from space. Manages to get one of the zone shatters, but the second one does survive. And now more Zorka is going to be coming in. Master Leaf with a three harvester cleanup on the right side. Those Zorkas killing three harvesters in one go. That, at the end, was pure execution from Master Leaf. That attack, it just didn't stop, and on top of that, he snuck the Zorkas over to the right side. He got the Harvesters as they were trying to retreat away from the front line, and he got the kill there. In seven and a half minutes, some Zocom tactics coming out from Master Leaf to show Space who the master of GDI really is. Do you have R16 up and running? I do not. I am downloading one map pack at a blazing fast speed of 267 kilobytes per second. Wow, that's pretty fast. 321 megs, by the way. That's one map pack. I'm going to be here all friggin' day. What is this? What is this download speed? I don't know because sometimes the downloads are fine, and then yeah, sometimes it's like five minutes for a map pack. Five minutes. It's going to be a couple of years. Yeah, I'm not sure. Like, I'm not sure what that's determines what happened. that. Like, I, I, I haven't been gone. Like, I've just been downloading this map pack for the last five years. <laughs> You're <laughs> still trying to. Every time you download the map pack and you think you you install it and get it ready to go, then a new one gets released. What is this? Like, I, I this application is something else, man. 
I do not know. Yeah, I'm not sure why the uh, why the speeds are so inconsistent. It is uh, shockingly slow. Trying to speed test, see how we're doing. No, I don't think it's the I don't think it's the speeds. I don't think it is either. I don't think it's the internet speeds. I pay the almighty Comcast a fair amount of moolah per month for this. Yeah, I'm getting about 450 megs down. Yeah. So no, uh, it's not that. It's uh. I'm gonna go ahead and blame things. this application. Yeah. No, I I have the same thing. It's like well, some days it's fine, and then other days it's. Oh, Maybe it's MDC. because the. What? I'm disconnecting from this game. No. Uh, well, it's dropping. The game is dropping, and I guess I'm the one, so. Well, that's fun. Oh, no, space is here. I'm connected to space. I don't know if they can see. No, I guess they can't see my chat. So they're in game, but I am apparently not. Oh, I think I'm about to drop. Well, that's unfortunate. It was, uh... It was, like, Marked of Cain versus something. And it was on the map Twilight City. I was excited to see that game. But now mm -hmm. I'm not going to get to. What happened? Did the game crash, or did you did you just get dropped out? Yeah, I got, I got dropped. But I could see their in-game chat. Well, that's okay. If you guys play, like, I'd say probably 150 more games, I might have the first map pack downloaded. Oh, that's really weird. So it loaded the map, and then they both died immediately, but it didn't exit me from the game. Hmm. So you're stuck? Uh, yeah, I had to manually quit the game. Nice. Uh, yes, the other voice that you are hearing is indeed Kane himself. Say hello, Kane. Hello, Kane. <laughs> so, uh, Spartacus, back from the dead for, you know, just one day. He comes back every six months, and then he has to die again and go serve in the underworld or something. He has to make his run to escape Hades. But, uh... Tell hey! you, man. Somebody has to download these map packs somewhere. That's right. All right, here in, we are here in Twilight City. Welcome. I did not radio cast. I almost radio casted as, uh, as we loaded into this game. On the south side plane as the orange marked of Cain, this is Masterleaf. And in the north side as the Cyan GDI, this is Space. Space getting bested by Masterleaf on that last map. Masterleaf busting out the Zocom tactics and making the uh, the Zocom shenanigans. Ooh, this engineer getting close to being sniped, but it wasn't that uh, that rifleman squad getting dangerously close to killing off one of Masterleaf's engineers, but not quite managing it. But anyways, in that last game, Masterleaf busting out the very specific Zocom tactics. Space, big commitment to anti-air, and then it didn't pay off, and he literally could not hold off the stuff that Masterleaf built. And now, we get to see some Marked of Cain play. So Zocom and Marked of Cain, definitely two factions that we don't see very much, and Masterleaf is bringing them both out for us to see today against Space. And, of course, Space, usually a fun player to watch against Masterleaf. He was fun to see in the, Nap in the Napoleonic VIP games as uh, he brought the, brought the more sensible long-term tactics and Masterleaf went for the rushy, rushy, end-of-the-game-quickly tactics. Space, sticking with that GDI, we'll see if he's able to uh, perhaps better adapt to Masterleaf on this map, which he's probably a little bit more familiar with. Twilight City is uh, played a little bit more often than Winter Meltdown or uh, whatever that last game was. EMP on the APC in the middle of the map as Master Leaf runs away with his Awakened squad. They're getting hunted down by this APC, and Master Leaf, well, 
He has, of course, developed some very specific strategies involving EMPs in the past. In this case, uh, he's not quite going to get the scout off with that particular Awakened squad that he wanted, but he will get a scout off nonetheless. Expansions coming up for Space and Master Leaf. Both of them moving their MCVs over to their natural. Couple of Pitbulls showing up for Space, but he's contending with the bike buggy of Master Leaf, and Master Leaf is going to push Space away for now. Overall, very uh, bog standard match coming out from these two guys. Very standard two games in a row, the openings. But uh, after the opening is where Master Leaf's strategy really came to fruition. And we'll see exactly what Space has planned. Right now he's doing the uh, no buildings thing. So he's not going into a fast refinery at the natural expansion or anything. Master Leaf already has his first ref placed. And Space is uh, not even starting his first ref at his natural expansion. Much more of a defensive play from Space. We'll have to see how it works out. Wait a second. He's dropping a barracks back at home. He's going into an armory. Very interesting from space. So definitely not just a normal expansion kind of a play. He's going for something a little bit weird. Master Leaf, on the other hand, goes straight into a second refinery on his natural expansion. So it's pretty much all eco all day. I mean, he has been going a decent amount of bikes and buggies just to survive. And actually, it's an MCV cell out of space. So he has shown his hand. Master Leaf shows up with a couple of bikes and space sells his MCV. And he is going to transition into this single... War Factory, I guess, all in? I mean, he's got the command post, he's got the armory, but no airfield is kind of curious, and it's just APCs, upgrades, and maybe even a couple of pit bulls, but for now, it looks like it's just APCs. I feel like Master Leaf is going to be able to hold this. We'll see if the rig is able to anchor space enough as the EMPs fire off, and it's going to be, I think, infinite EMPs for Master Leaf. What do you think, Baby Bert? He says, honk. Yeah, he's imitating the truck, and the harvesters actually make a very similar honking sound, although you never hear it in competitive Kane's Wrath because it is the greatest form of BM is to use the harvesters to honk at your opponent. But uh, Baby Bert knows the sound well enough because he's a pretty BM kind of player. Rockets coming in, and the EMPs continuing to lock down that rig as Master Leaf is holding off this attack with relative ease. I don't think a single Harvester has gone down, and Space is going to run out of steam sooner or later. He's got about a third of the field left, maybe even less than that, and I don't know how Space could possibly have transitioned out of that. So there's the GG, and Master Leaf takes game number two. Can you say hello? He waves hello, which no one can see because I don't have a webcam. What sound does the kitty make? <coughs> that wasn't even close. <coughs> there we go. That's the meow of the cat. All right, Master Leaf takes game number two in just over five minutes. A couple of quick matches from Master Leaf showing uh, domination in both strategy and tactics. Good night, baby bird. Oh, Sparty, what do you got going on? Well, so I have abandoned the idea of trying to download that map pack, and uh, I've been screwing around with settings, which appear to have been created back in, like, I don't know, early 1982. Um, and I'm just trying to figure out what to do at this point. Uh, Apparently I, I logged myself out of this command post thing, which... I, I might be able to what... transfer you the map pack directly over, like, Discord. Did you say goodnight to Abby? Yeah, you did. Okay. Goodnight, baby boy. All right, welcome to Tournament Arena, but Twisted. I actually don't remember if this is called Twisted Arena or if it's called something else. As our red black hand in the north side, this is space. 
And as the pink marked of Cain on the south side, this is Masterleaf. Masterleaf verse space continues. We started with a fun but silly game mode, and now we are here in regular 1v1s. Masterleaf showing a, a fairly dominating style. I mean, Space has put up a decent fight in theory. The last game going for that all-in, it fizzled out for sure. The first game getting caught by an outplay and uh, misreading the situation terribly. So, unfortunately for Space, these last two games have maybe not shown his full potential against Masterleaf, and instead have been just quite a good showcase of smooth, calm, collected play from Masterleaf. Making smart decisions, going for simple, well, maybe not simple, but going for smart builds with, uh, with like, relatively simple execution, and just pulling it off really well. Like the idea of going for zone shatterers and misdirecting your opponent with Zorka's first isn't some kind of wild idea. But the the perfection with which Masterleaf pulled it off was what made that work well. Buggy going to be coming in for space. He gets the scout off. They did choose factions beforehand, so they know that it's Marked of Cain versus Blackhand. This is not random v. random or anything like that. The buggy does get cleaned up. Masterleaf with the two bikes and the repairs is going to be absolutely fine, and Space should be able to see pretty much everything that he wants from Masterleaf. Masterleaf going for the very annoying play of using the Awakened Squads to EMP your opponent, and the range on that Shredder turret is just far enough that Space gets the kill on all of those Awakened Squads. Space dropping an additional barracks in his main... His expansion timing is a little late. We can forgive him because of the EMP shenanigans he was dealing with. Okay, there's the... I was really worried he was going to try and draft another War Factory and MCV sell all in. And it's like, maybe that works, but it probably doesn't. Especially when... Especially when Masterleaf is playing in good form. Unfortunately, Sparty not able to download the map packs because of the incredibly slow speeds, which are uh, somewhat mysterious because sometimes the download speeds are fine. And uh, Sparty is not feeling like spending the next hour or so downloading the map packs to, uh, to try and make it into these games. So he may be very well signing off for the night. And I don't know how much longer we'll go. This is all impromptu. This is None of this is well planned, so... We'll just see how the night progresses. Secret Shrine is up and running for space. He's going to be getting those Black Hand upgrades before even really his expansion is on the way. I mean, this is a fairly delayed natural expansion. And, well, Master Leaf is definitely going for something a little bit weird. Let's check space's vision. He is nowhere near being able to see the Operations Center and the Tech Lab coming out from Master Leaf. So Master Leaf going for Tib Core, EMP, or Charged Particle Beams and uh, Space has no idea about it. Or I guess it's supercharged particle beams, because, uh, you know, could just be going for the old turret push. I believe that was nerfed, you know, especially considering how, what it was in the original 1.02. It probably is been has been nerfed quite a bit from that, but this is a double MCV play off of one base economy for Master Leaf. He may go ahead and start long distance harvesting from that natural expansion, but it is going to be double shredder turrets. Now it does take a minute to upgrade that supercharged particle beam, but it's almost ready, so Master Leaf is almost ready to start unloading just beams of death forever and ever as Space is going to try and drop a laser turret on front of that. Master Leaf even bringing the Tiberium Troopers to the front line just to make sure he's got that extra bit of firepower. And now it's going to be four Shredder turrets with supercharged particle beams on the front line and two more on the way behind that. Master Leaf is not giving a moment's notice to Space. And Space pretty much sticking with a bike buggy and then infantry not going for a lot of Scorpion tanks, not going for a lot of standard stuff. And Space has been defeated. His two bikes going for the counterattack were not enough to uh, stop Master Leaf, especially when he can just drop the Shredder turret back home, get an easy kill on that, and then move on from there. 
So another pretty easy win for Masterleaf, but again, another specific strategy coming out from him. All right. So when the command post downloads things, it actually just downloads the regular installer, and I don't know if it deletes it after... Oh, here they are. All right, Sparty, I'm going to send you... The uh, I should have just done this from the beginning. Oh, Spartacus left the call. I'm just here talking to myself. I'm going to try and send this to Spartacus directly, and we'll see if he goes for it. The download speeds are uh, definitely frustrating. But we'll do one more. Uh, we'll do one more space versus leaf game, if we can. Ooh, we might be going back to Twilight City. Oh, it looks like Sparty went offline. Wah, wah. So yeah, Sparty went offline, which I get it. So no more Spartacus for tonight. We were trying to set something up uh, for a couple of days from now. We'll see if that actually works out. But this might be the end of this impromptu Kane's Wrath stream. Thank you for joining. Thank you for watching. We're going to see GDI vs. Random. So we'll see what this last match of Master Leaf versus Space yields us. I don't think... Wait. What? Okay. This is bugged. Uh, it's pulling up a weird transfer screen. So, it looks like I'm out. Unfortunately, it looks like my game is going to crash. So... Yeah. I guess I don't have the map. Which is odd. It says my R16 is up to date. That's weird. I don't know why... I don't know why that didn't work. Yeah, that's weird. I was just checking command post and it says that it is installed and up to date, but that didn't work, so I don't know what that is. I'm going to jump back on Kane's Wrath, see if it crashed for those guys, and then we might just call it a night right there, or we might have one more game. And the, uh, the VOD will definitely be the way to watch this particular stream.
Thank you all very much for tuning in. We're going to try one more time, and then we'll just call it a night there. We got our uh, show match between Master Leaf and Space. We're going to try and do another uh, Napoleonic VIP show match at a later date. Since this one didn't quite turn out. All right, it looks like they are already in the game. They are not online, so. Oh no, here they are. Never mind. All right, so we got one more game. Great. All right, we got one more game to show us out for the night. It was definitely a weird stream, definitely a little bit of an odd one. And uh, it looks like Space is going to play Random and Master Leaf is going to play GDI. We'll see if that sticks. The map is Tournament Dust Bowl, no poker. Welcome to Tournament Dust Bowl No Poker. This is the version that parents everywhere want their kids to play in the north as the Red Steel Talons. This is space. In the south as the Green GDI. This is Master Leaf. GDI versus Steel Talons, but of course, Space is playing random, so he knows that Master Leaf is GDI, and at this point, Master Leaf knows that he is in, that Space is indeed a GDI sub-faction or faction of some kind, and we shall see if there is any special use for Titans, Wolverines, perhaps a spicy rig rush coming out from Space. We'll see exactly what he plans, what he has. Master Leaf, on the other hand, might just very well play it as normal as he can. Might play a straight-up GDI versus GDI kind of game. Lots of pit bulls, transition into Preds at some point, Pred APC until you get rail guns, and then maybe even go for a Marv after that. Master Leaf versus Space has been a sort of a game of specificity. Up to this point, Master Leaf has gone for a couple of specific things, playing Mark of Cain and Zocom. And then Space tried something specific, and Master Leaf was able to hold it off. So this is the first game where Master Leaf is maybe just going for something a bit more generic. And since Space played random, I don't think Space has any particular tactics in mind that he's going for. He's just going to also play it probably pretty casual and pretty normal. So this way may very well be the most standard 
of the games. Expansions coming up for both players. And now that we've got our naturals up and running, this is the point where Master Leaf has been differentiating a little bit. No fast Titan rushes for Harvester crushing or Wolverines, one base rig plays from space. Nothing like that. Instead, just straight up macro oriented play. By the way, if you want to see first-person perspective, Master Leaf is streaming over on his Twitch channel. I actually don't know the URL off the top of my head, but if you want to see his first-person view. And then uh, he also will sometimes upload the VODs to YouTube. I don't know if he does that all the time or if he uh, or if he kind of does a VOD every once in a while. But if you want to see the first-person view, especially since this will be my last game for tonight, you can check that out. Master Leaf going for the Grenadier squad to clear the middle of the map. Feeling uh, very reminiscent to one of the previous matches. Pitbull's going to be taking pokes at each other. All right, so refinery into command post at the natural expansion for Master Leaf. Double refinery for space. So unless Master Leaf doesn't get... Never mind, there's a second refinery for Master Leaf. So essentially... Equal builds. They're not different enough from each other to particularly matter. The command post is a little bit faster for Master Leave. AP ammo is going to be done sooner, but his economy is going to be a little bit slower on the uptick for the rest of the game. Master Leaf is going for a rig through the middle of the map, so the rest of the game may not actually matter. And in that case, oh, Master Leaf loses two harvesters, and a third one is about to go down as well. Can you believe it? Master Leaf going for the juke on that harvester, extremely close to getting crushed, and he's now going to have to try and pull rocket squads. Meanwhile, he's still pushing with this rig. He didn't pull it back for some reason. He committed to this rig rush, and now he's going to be in an extremely awkward spot as he's got a rig going on and trying to defend harvesters back home, which have been defended at this point. He's got one shatterer out, a couple of rocket squads, and that's going to hold that off for now. Engineer on the right side of the map from Master League. The rig is gone, but one Titan went with it as well. An APC is eliminated, and two, three pit bulls go down to the splash damage from Master Leaf's forces. This engineer might entirely be for this tip spike, but there's actually an MRT here, I think, with a with a rifleman squad inside of it. Space is not a guy who apparently just Q commands his whole army to go do something, so he's got... No, he pulls it back at the last second. Oh, he sees the engineer. Nice catch there by Space. It does indeed have the rifleman squad in there from earlier. That's the rifleman squad we saw him garrison much earlier in this match. Railguns most likely on the way, but it's going to be Orcas for Master Leaf, and he knows that there isn't a lot of protection. Great catch there by Master Leaf. He made use of that splash damage on those harvesters. That was, a, that was just a lucky moment, a happy accident if you will, and actually miss the opportunity there. Uh, perhaps a more intentional move would have been to attack these two harvesters on the left that were actually stacked up on top of each other as they were transferring to that natural expansion. Master Leaf with all of the Orcas, but they managed to escape, and that's a critical thing, is that he didn't lose all of his Orcas in one foul swoop. He got a couple of Harvester kills, some damage done nicely, but he kept his Orcas alive, and that's almost more important than doing the damage. The scan does go down for space. You can see the little dot on the minimap, and he does see all four of those Orcas there, so he's got something to worry about, and he most likely will be drafting some additional anti-air base defenses. His MCV moving over to the third base, and both of these guys are going to be pretty well established for the end game, assuming that we do go that far as Space has a big squad of units in the middle of the map. A couple of Titans stomping their way across the map, and uh, was that another? No, that was a Sonic Emitter, or not a Sonic Emitter, but rather a Sonic Shatterer going down. The Orc is getting free damage on these Titans. The Pitbulls are way the heck back home. A critical defensive mistake there by 
uh, by space is to send the Titans out with no anti-air support at all. Of course, he was worried about losing Harvesters back home, but he still sent the Titans out completely unsupported. Master Leaf saw the opening and was able to make easy use of it. Now it's going to be uh, two weak Titans and some Pit Bulls against the forces of Master Leaf, which right now the forces are just Hammerheads and Orcas, so the Pit Bulls are going to trade okay, but still not nearly the firepower that Space was hoping to show up at this base with. Only one Orca going down, and every single Pit Bull gets eliminated. Master Leaf now going to be slowly marching his way into Space's original main base. Space is going to have to relocate entirely over to his natural expansion, I mean his third base, which uh, is honestly kind of like his second base at this point. He does have Railgun Mammoth tanks. One of them is heading slowly back to his main base, and he's going to try and put on pressure there. It's all Pit Bulls from space, at least for the current moment. I don't know if Master Leaf is just going to come back in here with Orcas. No, he's going to hit the fourth, the third base once again, finding the opening, finding the spot where there is no anti-air, and he gets two Harvester kills nice and easy. Meanwhile, on the south side, this fully heroic Rifleman squad, I think, actually killed off a power plant here. So space, the power of just having a Rifleman in a foxhole in your opponent's base is that they will eventually forget about it, and you will get a free power plant kill, and that is what just happened to space. He might actually get the kill on this har on this hem predator tank as well which would be absolutely amazing i don't even care what's going on on the rest of this map because this rifleman squad kills a predator tank you have to give it that is an incredible moment here in kane's wrath and not something we see very often how annoying is this rifleman squad I mean, come on, a Rifleman Squad killing a Predator tank. I hope he re-garrisons a Foxhole and then starts shooting that other power plant. That would just be phenomenal. Two Mammoth Tanks going to be stepping forward. Space loses one of them, and these are completely unsupported Mammoth Tanks, so they're just getting swarmed by Rocket Squads, which is a pretty cheap way to kill off a couple of Mammoth Tanks, especially when your opponent went ahead and spent money on Railguns as well. So those Mammoth Tanks represent a fairly serious investment by space, and they just get cleaned up by Rocket Squads. A sloppy game left and right from both players, but far, far sloppier for space. And check out this Rifleman. The only thing that space is doing right is this Rifleman squad. He's going to insta-kill the paltry Rifleman squad of Master Leaf. And Master Leaf somehow not able to deal with this one Rifleman squad. He's got so much other stuff going on. He's got so much of this game on lock, but he can't kill off this one Rifleman squad that Space is using to terrorize his units. Never mind, as a, uh, as a Shatterer shows up, and this is going to absolutely destroy that Rifleman squad. So goodbye, Rifleman squad. It was nice to know you, but Master Leaf is... Well, in this case, he is the final boss of that Rifleman squad. And the Rifleman squad is going to have to reset and try once again. Harvester getting auto-drafted over to the left side of the map because that is the closest Tiberium patch. is a little bit unfortunate for Master Leaf, who loses that Harvester. I don't think he's too shabby on Harvesters. He's got probably enough to, uh, to stay in the game with losing that one Harvester. Master Leaf is also choosing to keep his Harvesters on his expansion fields, which, as he himself did the math, you actually make more money if you pull the harvesters off the field, let it regrow, rather than uh, harvesting it immediately. EMP fires off. Master Leaf has held that in the middle of the map for long enough, and now he's going to get free damage on these Mammoth Tanks. Uh, one Mammoth Tank going to be activating the adaptive armor, but these Juggernauts as well getting free damage off, and Space has been defeated, totally destroyed by Master Leaf. Kane himself saying that those GDI rifle squads were good men. And if Kane is saying that a GDI rifleman is good men, then you know that that is in tr indeed true. That will do it. Master Leaf absolutely dominating in this impromptu uh, series. Definitely outclassing space overall. That's not necessarily the space we wanted to see, but... He was definitely a bit thrown off in this series, I think. So a big thank you to these guys for playing a, an impromptu Napoleonic VIP show match and then for uh, playing a couple of more games and letting me observe them. They definitely let me uh, just intrude upon their time. They were having a good day just playing their own games their own way, and then I showed up and I was like, hey, I want you to play something for my entertainment. 
and then they were willing to do that. So big thank you to them. Thank you all very much for watching. It was a very short stream today. Again, very impromptu. But thank you all very much for tuning in. This is the end. I'm going to go spend some time with my family, which is a novel thing to do. And I hope that you guys all have a wonderful day and also just a good good evening and a good family time or a video game time or go eat dinner or go to sleep or whatever it is that you do. Have a wonderful night. And this is Cybert signing out.